we're going to be talking about game prep. And there's many different ways to approach this. You can either go very minimalistic in a kind of like lazy dungeon master style, or you can go full blown, write a freaking book. And there's not a single perfect way to do this. It all depends on your style. I personally have tried both systems. I used to write a lot on my for my games. So then I went the opposite direction. Uh, I, as some of you might know, I bought the Lazy Dungeon Master book and I find the approach that that book recommends very useful. It's very simple, very quick, but at the same time, I felt I was missing some elements. So what I'm going to be showing you now is the system I'm currently using, which might not be the final system. I might shift eventually into something else, but this is what's working for me at the moment. So without further ado, I'm going to show you the system I'm using right now. This is basically what I'm using currently. This is from my last session and it's printed on both sides. And you see there's a lot of, seems to be a lot of content, but I'm going to explain to you why there's this much content and that my, my personal reasons why this is written this way. I split the document in different sections, as you can see there. Uh, and I'm going to explain what each section means and uh, its purpose. So the first section is the recap. And I know some game masters prefer to have the players provide their recaps, sort of jog their memories. But I'd rather have uh, myself present that information because in a way it can be unfair to the players. I mean, they they have regular lives, they have things to do, they might not remember all the details. And there might be things that I want to bring up in the recap because they're important to the plot. And this is something I usually will read. And I write it in sort of story format, uh, where like a narration. So it's not just a recap, oh, this happened, this character spoke to this guy, and then I, I sort of narrate it as a story. So it's a good way to have the players gather around and start getting involved in the thread of the of the current session. And then after reading that, we segue right into the introduction. And the introduction is just exactly that. It's a way for me to narrate uh, a scene or something that's going on that's going to be introducing them to the actual uh, session. So basically it ties the previous session into the new one. The introduction will be longer if the, the previous session stopped at a point where it would involve more role playing than, for example, combat. Uh, in a combat situation, probably the description would be very simple. We dive right into the action. Uh, we get the players excited about what's going on. We can talk about the odds. Or like in this case, and that's why you see so much text, I'm describing this whole thing about an airship uh, approaching the, the player characters and the situation that develops there and eventually uh, my players learned that their hometown had been destroyed by the enemies. So this is most of the writing is done in the recap and the introduction, because again, I like to read that. And as I'm reading though, I'm, I might be pointing at player characters and, and might be a side comment for that character and remind them of something to, to, to draw them into the story. The next point after that is uh, key points, and key points is just a list of bullet uh, points with important stuff. Different things that I think are important to keep in mind while we interact with the characters in, in that session. Uh, things that might drive the story. These are not actual storylines or plot lines, it's mostly things that I, it, it, it's good for me to keep in mind that I don't forget or that I can make an NPC bring up. And then the final thing is called branches. And branches is where I go, you know, more into the Lazy Dungeon Master style. For branches, I select like three things, three possible branches that might be the outcome of that situation. It's not railroading. I mean, in the end, my player characters have all the free will they can have in the game, but knowing the story and knowing the players and the characters in the situation, I think of three things they're more likely to head into, uh, go to a particular places or make 
certain decisions and so forth. Basically, I'm leaving the world open for my prayers, but I'm also preparing for the possibilities, things that I know are most likely to happen in that session. And that's basically it. That's the system. Um, again, the, the, the areas are recap, where I summarize the previous session, introduction, where I segue the recap into the actual session and read that narration, key points, which is just a reference for myself, it might include dialogue, like I mentioned, and other details. And finally, branches. Where is the story heading to? So I hope this can give you some ideas. Again, I might change the system in a few weeks. Uh, this is a constant experimental thing. Even though I've been playing for so many years, I keep experimenting and finding new and different ways to do things and to improve my game. Because in the end, what I'm looking for is to entertain my players and for me to also enjoy the game. So I find the, try to find the easiest way to get that whole story uh, substance and, and coherence and continuity and, and being able to provide that entertainment but in a way that is easy for me to manage. So tell me, what system do you use? Do you use something like this? Do you have a document that you write out? Do you just put notes in a card? Or do you write almost an entire campaign book for each session? Let me know in the comments. As always, if you like the content of the video, please hit the like button. If you like the channel, feel free to subscribe, share the video openly, and until next time, keep those D20s rolling.